We'll get you a bag full of goodies. So sweet. All right, well, we still are getting everyone joining and Susan is just getting set up. Welcome back, Emily. Um, again, my name is Kayla Bisbee with the Jewish Federation of Greater New Haven. Uh, we are here on behalf of PJ Library and Shalom Baby in partnership with the JCC of Greater New Haven. Susan Donovan, who will be leading us in today, our third session of our four-week series of pelvic floor strengthening. More than just Kegels, um, Susan is the director of our health and wellness here at the JCC. So I will let her go ahead and take us away and I will just continue to let people in as they join us. And I just love this photo. Go ahead, Susan, but you are muted. You're still muted, my friend. There we go. Okay. How about now? Okay, so welcome. Um, so today is our third session for the pelvic floor training, but I know we have some new people that came on board. And this program is designed to review anyway. So um, no worries, we're gonna start with a brief review because the type of work is a progressive. And I wanna make sure that we understand all the, the subtleties so that you get the, the work, the therapy, the training correct. Um, as Kayla mentioned, you're welcome to have your video on, and I would encourage that. I think that makes for a better interactive session. If you're not comfortable, that's fine. The minimal movements that we will be doing are uh, mostly on the mat, and if I can see you, I can help to provide a cue that might make the work, the particular exercise a little more effective, but that's totally a personal choice. So basically, we're going to move through a series of very gentle exercises that focus on the pelvic floor. Um, so whether you're uh, postpartum or, um, or even, you know, in the midst of pregnancy, if you have issues with incontinence or pelvic pain, uh, a number of different um, symptoms pelvic floor training can be beneficial for. <clears throat> Basically, I want to start with just some general anatomy, and we reviewed this last week, but it's good to have this visual in your mind's eye when we work on the practice, because your pelvic floor is a series of muscles. It's not just, you know, one muscle that lays at, at the bottom of your pelvis, and you could note by this graphic, there's a series of muscle fiber, ligament, tendon, fascial tissue that create a bottom of your pelvic bowl. So that's looking like the head down at your uh, pelvic floor muscles, <clears throat> this being the spine. So understanding that as we move forward, you could create that visual when we work on the actual Kegel exercise and engaging those very small, those very subtle uh, muscles to perform um, the exercises that will give us the results that we're seeking. Uh, basically, uh, functionally speaking, your pelvic floor works as like a hammock. Simply put, imagine it's like a hammock and it supports your pelvic organs. So having that musculature be not only strong and toned, but also flexible is important as we move through our life and the function of the pelvic floor. Um, this graphic gives you a general description of the musculature and how important, how connected your pelvic floor musculature is connected to the abdominals. This is your core cylinder. Now there's a lot more muscles, tendons, fibers, etc. involved, but this gives you a general graphic of how that kind of oval circle um, in your body is situated and how your pelvic floor is very much connected to your diaphragm, which is at the top, as you can see, your transverse abdominus, which is the deeper 
the, the girdle, in Pilates method, we call it sometimes like the girdle muscles of your core cylinder. Those lie underneath your superficial, the six pack ab, if you will, rectus abdominis. But that, that muscle group connected to the multifidus, which are the small rib back muscles, that is like the core, the deeper core musculature. And the work that we do today will affect all of that core cylinder because that's what's needed for results. So that said, we're going to begin with working the diaphragm as we start to move with breath into our pelvic floor. And I'm going to review for some of you and teach for others basically the subtle neuromuscular movement and connection of the pelvic floor in a Kegel exercise. So take a look at this graphic, understanding that's the diaphragm. Look at how big. That, that's a big sheath of a muscle. And as you inhale, that musculature presses down against the internal organs, affecting your other, the muscles that we just saw in the previous slide. As you exhale, this actual <clears throat> graphic is a picture of the exhale as that sheath of muscle draws up. And believe it or not, it massages your lungs. So let's begin with that visual in your body as we come into a seated position. I'm just going to leave that up because there, there's nothing to see. So grab your either a chair or um, your mat. You should have a mat handy, by the way, because most of the work in class today is going to be on the floor on your mat. So you can sit either in a position that's comfortable on your mat, or you can bring a chair over and sit in a comfortable seated position. So go ahead and find the position that works for you. <clears throat> and whichever position that is, I want you to close your eyes. <clears throat> and let's begin by just bringing our awareness internal. <clears throat> Be aware of your breathing. Sitting tall, your sitting bones are resting evenly on the surface below you. Your spine is long and tall, lengthening up and out of the hips. Your shoulders soften as they relax. Your scapula, your shoulder blades just kind of glide along towards your mid to upper back. Your chest slightly lifts, so your sternum draws up ever so gently. That helps to support a tall and neutral spine. So get comfortable in the physical posture of sitting. And again, bring your awareness back to your breathing. Breathe in your nose and out your mouth. That's all. Just breathe in your nose and out your mouth. Now, as you breathe in, fill your core cylinder with breath. And as you breathe out, empty the breath. So we're getting some movement in the diaphragm by focusing on some deeper, fuller breath. No struggle, no forcing, just breathing bigger. Now, as you continue that rhythm of what feels natural for you, for your breath cycle, making it a little bit bigger without any struggle, I want you to imagine in your mind's eye the visual of the pelvic floor musculature I just showed you. On your next out breath, Think about drawing the pelvic floor up towards your center. A very gentle engagement or tightening sensation of the muscles along the bottom of your pelvis. And as you inhale, release that contraction and soften. 
So we're breathing down into the pelvic floor, allowing the breath to drop lower without forcing it. Almost a balloon-like sensation in the pelvic floor with the tissue softening on the inhale. But on the exhale, sense that soft tissue, your pelvic floor musculature, that area coming back up into the body. Continue to breathe with that gentle engagement of your pelvic floor, almost like you could picture an elevator rising up when you exhale. Notice if you're like really gripping or holding your breath during the breath cycle at all. And if you are, just soften, relax, and reattempt connecting and engaging your pelvic floor musculature without gripping or tensing. If you aren't feeling anything, that's absolutely okay. If this is new work for you, that's okay. We have to reacquaint, we have to reconnect the uh, brain channels of, of movement or wake up the musculature, if you will, to the pelvic floor. Consistency and patience is the key when you do pelvic floor training. So keep on going. Let's do four more breath cycles. Breathing in, imagining, softening, and breathing out, drawing up, lifting from the center as the pelvic floor draws up into the body. So we're breathing at a rhythm that's slow, probably a count of four or five on each cycle. So if you were breathing a little quicker than that, take these last few breath cycles in this position and try to slow it down by counting, if that helps you counting to five. goal is to engage, contract, but also to release. Okay. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. And we're going to come down to uh, the mat now and move into some of the other exercises. But if you have any, if anyone wants to unmute themselves, if you have any questions or comments just on that, especially anyone new to the class, um, it can be sometimes a little bit, um, a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit weird. So don't hesitate to pop in and ask a question if you need it. Okay. Um, otherwise, you're going to now lay down. So if you have your mat handy. You're going to come to a supine position that's laying down on your back with your knees bent. Now, most of this work as you're laying down, I don't want you to have to kind of lift up and twerk to see the screen. I want you to relax, lay back with your gaze up towards the ceiling, your arms resting by your side. You want to just eyeball your knees and rest them hip width apart with your feet comfortably underneath your knees. So go ahead and assume this position and take a moment to relax everything. You'll be able to follow my cues now, so don't worry about that, but I want you to close your eyes. And in this position, just breathe. Just breathe in your nose and out your mouth, just like we did seating, that's all. And on the exhale, see if you can recruit that Kegel exercise. In this different position, the perception might be a little bit easier, might be a little bit easier to manage the subtle Kegel exercise. And you might be more aware of whether you're clenching, squeezing your butt, or, or clenching any other areas of the body when you do this Kegel. If you find that happening, I want you to stop, 
take a cleansing breath and then revisit. So as you breathe in, there's no movement right now. As you breathe in, you're visualizing that balloon inflating. Your belly might rise a little bit. Just let that happen organically. Feel a softening of the pelvic floor. Imagine the musculature, that hammock-like uh, structure at the bottom of your pelvic floor. And as you exhale, just draw up and into your center. And let's do just a few more of these so our body can acclimate to working in this position. Always being conscious of whether or not you're starting to grip. Full, deep breaths, contracting and releasing. Low count of five. Be mindful if you're going too quick for this first set. It's very subtle, isn't it? When you're practicing the Kegel exercise, nobody should be able to tell what you're doing. You're not gripping or tensing anything. It's a very internal focus. And now, with your eyes closed, visualize and bring into your mind's eye that graphic that I showed you earlier of your abdominal musculature and how the pelvic floor is connected to your core cylinder because we're going to begin to bring some of those muscles in to join the party. So as you inhale, invite your pelvis to tilt. Tail draws very gently towards the floor between your legs you'll create a bit of a space for most of us at your low back. When you exhale, begin at the pelvic floor by drawing the musculature in, and now sense a deeper contraction of the abdominal muscles as you imprint your low back to the mat, to the floor, the surface below you, and your tail now tucks. So continue, this is called a pelvic tilt and tuck. Allow the breath to dictate when you move. So as you inhale, allow the pelvis to tilt and the pelvic floor to soften. As you exhale, draw from the bottom of your pelvis up, it's almost like you're zipping up from your pubic bone to your navel and the low back imprints. So continue breathing in, soften, relax, tilt, breathing out, draw in and up and tuck. Notice as you become very efficient at this movement, are you beginning to squeeze your butt muscles? Are you beginning to clench anywhere else in the body? Are you feeling a stronger sense of clarity of the connection that your pelvic floor has with the deeper abdominal musculature? Think about all of those things and it's okay if you're not getting a clear sensation, because with practice, you will. And that's what it's all about, guys. It's practice. This work requires practice. It's not something that magically your pelvic floor is toned once again after childbirth or um, if you experience incontinence or any other uh, pelvic issue. It, it takes time for any muscle group to tone and to get back that not only the connection, but the tone and strength, it's practice. So let's do one more with that focus. And when you're ready from that position, rest in a neutral, just bring your back, your pelvis into a neutral position, and then extend your legs out and just relax everything. 
So close your eyes and soften your whole body. So release, relax everything. And just rest there for a moment. So just like with any exercise program, it's important that the, the release, the relaxing, is equally as important as the engagement and the contraction. So just rest there. Take a deep cleansing breath into your whole body. And when you're ready, we're going to move into the next exercise, which is a bridge. So for the past few weeks, I've invited you to use either like a deflated ball or maybe a rolled up towel or something that you can place comfortably between your thighs. If you have something handy and you want to grab, go ahead and grab it now. And if not, then don't worry about it because you can do this without any, without any props, without any toys. So if you have something, and the purpose of this is just to help you to really get the sensation that we're going after, because again, the work is really quite subtle. If you have something that is like squishy or soft, place it between your thighs, not between your knees, but between your thighs, kind of like the mid to upper, close to the pubic bone. Come back into a supine position, and again, if you don't have that prop, don't worry about it. You're back in the same position. So, one, just for one time to set us up, let's inhale into a pelvic tilt. Exhale, draw up the pelvic floor, tuck the pelvis. And when you inhale to release, come to the middle of those two which is your spine and pelvic neutral. Take a moment to bring your fingertips to the front of your, your hip bones. They're actually not your hip bones. They're ASIS is what they're called. And they're kind of the bony protrusion of the pelvis, but we perceive that as your hip bones. So with your fingertips there, you can get the tactical sensation of feeling like they're level. Your pelvic bowl is now neutral and level. Imagine and create that in your body. Now give your, if you're using a prop, give that just a very gentle squeeze. And as you do that, draw again on that Kegel exercise of your pelvic floor musculature drawing up and then releasing back down. So as you exhale, draw up, a gentle squeeze at your inner thighs, and then you're going to release it. Now we're going to add the movement of the bridge. So as you exhale, we draw up on the pelvic floor with a gentle squeeze of your inner thighs. And now we are going to activate the glutes and bring the hips up. And as we inhale, we're going to lower back down, come to neutral, and release the pelvic floor. So as we exhale, gentle squeeze, draw on your Kegel exercise. Use your glutes to draw your hips up. And as you inhale, lower back down. So continue with this cycle. We're going to go for 15 repetitions. And the focus is, once again, on your pelvic floor. So we're doing, this is a level one exercise we call the bridge. You might be very familiar with it if you practice yoga or, or any type of glute conditioning work. This is very level one in terms of the exercise intensity, but the challenge is to start at the pelvic floor and see if you can draw in and up maintaining that engagement as you press up into a bridge. It's a little bit more challenging with that internal focus. Keep on going, but what we're doing by adding movement is retraining those neuromuscular pathways for your pelvic floor to turn on as we begin to move the body. So as we get close to that 15th repetition, 
I'm going to ask you to pause at the top, maintaining the bridge. So in this position, go ahead, close your eyes again and go internal with your focus and your awareness. Find a rhythm of breathing that is comfortable. Notice that your glutes are going to stay engaged to hold the hips in this bridge position. Your hip bones or ASIS, your pelvic is very level. I'm not in a yoga bridge. I'm maintaining neutral in my spine. And now there is a more of a driving sensation in this position because we're allowing gravity to help now. As we draw in the pelvic floor, imagine it pulling up into your center and then releasing it. So go ahead and practice drawing up and then releasing. So as we exhale, three, two, one, inhale, release, but hold the bridge. Exhale. Inhale. Keep on going. So notice the position aiding in the ability to draw the pelvic floor up and into the center of your body. Less, a little less involvement to the glutes because the glutes are just holding the position. Can you maintain that bridge position while you continue to draw in and up on the pelvic floor? Think, it, think about that. Try to work on that. We want to do about 10 repetitions here. Again, there, it's a slow count. And breathe vocally. Think about. Think about your breath. And go ahead and do one more. And after that last cycle, lower your body, come all the way down, extend your legs out, relax and soften. Another deep cleansing breath, relax any tension that was created from that prior exercise. When you're ready, come on over. We're going to roll on our side. So now, in this position, I recommend you come all the way down with your bottom arm, allowing for a little bit of a pillow or a support for your head so that your neck can remain neutral. And you can use that little towel or that prop if you need it to support your cervical spine or your neck. Bring your knees forward with your feet slightly in front of your knees. So when you look down, you're kind of in a fetal position. Now, sometimes this is a comfortable position to sleep in. So place your feet just slightly in front of your knees in a nice right angle back position. Your top hand is on the floor. Relax everything here. Once you find the position, settle into it. And again, visualize the muscles of the pelvic floor. So not only do we want a nice toned pelvic, pelvic floor, we also want a flexible pelvic floor. And because of the way that muscle group is situated in the body, it's connected to a lot of the muscles in the hip. So in this practice, all we're going to do is a very subtle, a very basic clamshell shell exercise, which is simply Lifting the knee open, your, your foot can stay down or your foot can lift as long as you're getting rotation in the hip. Again, we're not looking, this exercise is not being performed today to strengthen our hips, although it is good for hip mobility. But it's to focus on and imagine the pelvic floor, how it's positioned, how it's connected to these muscles that operate rotation of your hip. Being aware, awareness is really the first step. So as you do this, 
you'll feel the dominant sensation in your hips. But I want you to be aware of your pelvic floor and just notice any subtleties as you begin to move. Can you feel that connection? I'm not asking you to perform a Kegel or do anything else, but I do want you to notice any sensation that you might be experiencing. And after we do it, just about 15 or so, just rest. You're, you're going to feel the sensation here. Exhale. Now do a Kegel exercise at rest and reacquaint yourself with that stronger sensation. Breathing. And come on over to the other side. It's also very common if you have any level of pelvic floor dysfunction. It's very common. So go ahead and find the position. Lengthen, neutral, and begin a very gentle clamshell on this side. So it's very common to have an imbalance in the function of your pelvic floor. And sometimes you can notice that if when, when you are going to the bathroom and you're urinating, notice if you tend to shift. I know it seems like it's a little bit weird, but notice when you do that, if you tend to shift without even being aware of it, except that I'm asking you to be aware of it now, because that could be a sign of a subtle imbalance in the muscles of the pelvic floor. And this type of training will help not only tone and strengthen, but balance and flexibility of those muscles. So again, you're doing this side, you're noticing and feeling maybe a little bit of activity in the hip rotators, but we're connecting to the pelvic floor. And then after you do about 15 or so of those, once again, just rest here and draw in. Give me that subtle Kegel exercise, elevator rising up, and then releasing completely with the breath. Notice if it feels the same on this side. There's no right or wrong. We're just noticing. And then relax everything. And once again, go ahead, roll over into a supine position. Extend your legs out, shake it out, soften your whole body into the surface below you. Relax and take a deep cleansing breath there. And when you're ready, come on up to a seated position. So once again, you can come to your chair, you can sit on a chair, or you can sit in any comfortable position on the floor. And now we're gonna move into our series of quick flicks. Um, again, if you're new to this class, we're doing pelvic floor engagement, but it's quick. It's squeeze, release, squeeze up, release. So it's quick, they're called quick flicks. And in a seated position, I want you to close your eyes and imagine you're gonna go as fast as comfortable. So the goal isn't like quick, quick, quick. The goal is quick release. But the next repetition doesn't begin until the full release. So it's easy to engage quickly, sometimes a little bit more challenging to release and soften quickly. So do your best as long as you're sitting tall, reimagine, again, close your eyes so you can get a clear picture and that sends a stronger message to the muscles at the bottom of the pelvis to breathe, breathe comfortably, draw up, release, draw up, release. So your count might be something like squeeze, release, squeeze, release, squeeze, release. 
Now, I, I'm going to stop talking because that might be quicker or slower than what is comfortable for you. So begin and notice. Feel and breathe. Notice if you're engaging the whole core cylinder or if you can better clarify and isolate just the pelvic floor. Notice if you're gripping anywhere in the upper body or holding your breath at the end of either the in-breath or the out-breath. Those are all things to just become aware of as you practice the quick flicks. And if you feel at any time that you are just, you know, getting confused or just not feeling a clear connection, stop. Relax. Take a deep cleansing breath. And then revisit it. So let's try for two sets. So you probably already did about 15 at this point. So stop. Take a cleansing breath. And then see if you can do 15 more. A little bit clearer. Maybe a little bit stronger maybe a little bit quicker. There's no right or wrong. Feel, breathe, and think of this as practice. Practice. Breathe. And after you feel as though you did about 15 on your second set, then come on out of it. And I'm going to invite you to move into a four pose position. And we're going to reconnect the deep core muscles with the muscles of the pelvic floor with the breath. So after the work that we already did on the mat and seated, let's see how that affects um, how that affects this next exercise, pulling it all together. So come to a four pose position, which is hands and knees. Your hands are directly below your shoulders, your knees directly below your hips. You can rest your toes or you can tuck your toes under and rest your toes on the mat in this position, whichever feels more comfortable. We begin by noticing first a sense of balance between those four points. Balance your weight evenly. And on your inhale now, you're going to allow the belly to soften, the chest to drop between your arms, your tail, tail to tilt upward as if it's gliding up the wall behind you. Your sternum to gently pull forward as you look forward on the floor. That's all. Soften everything in the middle as you allow your spine to extend and lengthen. Now fill your belly with breath because you're softening everything. Let, let your breakfast hang out there and fill the body with breath. When you exhale, begin at the pelvic floor as you draw up and in, tucking at the navel, drawing the tail between your legs and rounding into a scared cat position. When you're empty of breath, release the pelvic floor, release the musculature, and come back into the spinal extension. As you breathe out, round. Breathe in, extend. Breathe out. So your out breath, vocal. If you practice Pilates, we call that a Pilates breath, that vibration of the exhale,
stimulates the core musculature. But think, remember, this is a pelvic floor training, so we want to begin at the bottom of the pelvis. Keep on going. I'm going to invite you to do 10 to 12 of these, but listen to my cues. Every repetition, your out breath, the pelvic floor draws up. You're moving that musculature up closer to your center. Your deep core muscles engage and you round the spine. So practice each cycle. This is a great yoga. They call it cat, dog, cat, camel. It's a great spinal flexibility and uh, core mobility exercise, but we're really driving the effort from the pelvic floor. We're clearing that connection. We're creating a stronger toner pelvic floor. This is a great exercise to do um, at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day. Especially if you find that you're, you're kind of sitting at the computer all day, your back really needs the extension. And the flexion is a nice stretch as you connect with your pelvic floor. So finish up. And when you're done with 10 or 12 of those, if you have to stop and take a break and just kind of re readjust, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, finish up that set and just take a little child pose stretch back. That's a nice lengthening. That's just a nice feel-good position. And then come on up into a seated. So when you're ready, when you're done with that, come into a seated position now. And I'm going to invite you to come on in because I want to talk about, I'm going to give you your, your homework, your practice. <laughs> and I also want to um, want you to share your experience and uh, talk about what I recommend for your homework to be. And then for next week, which will be our last session on this series, um, there's a prop that I would like you to bring to class because we're going to try something a little bit um, new. We're going to add another layer to uh, pelvic floor training. So if anybody wants to come on screen, I would love to hear um, what you have to say. And if, and if you don't want to, that's okay too. So my, um, my first question, and if you wanna unmute yourself if there's any questions that you have, um, but my first question to you, for those of you that have been uh, with me every week, um, how is it going and how is your homework going? Are you able to remember to do it? <laughs> because that's part of it. It's part of just like remembering to do it. And then when you do remember to do it, are you finding it helpful? And or are you starting to see any slight improvement? Does anybody have any comments that they would like to make on that? I'll say that I'm only like semi participating because I'm here in the office, but um, I know I like probably, probably everyone else here is crazed at home with a child or children. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's hard to keep up with everything, but fortunately, because it is something that's very slight, when I can make the mental reminders, then, then yes, I'm able to, to do the practice, but I, I certainly need to that, that is exactly, that's a great, great, great point. That's just, that's a reality, right? Uh, but the great thing about, so the homework that we're talking about, if I know we have some new people here, is that holding, practicing the Kegel exercise for a count of five, and then releasing for five. Holding for five, and releasing for five and doing that for a cycle of 10 sets. So really just like 10 times, hold for five, release for five. And then the second thing I, I was recommending that that be done a few times a day, ideally three times a day. Um, and the other one is the quick flicks, release, squeeze, release, squeeze, release, which can be done again. You are, you know, anywhere when you're, um, when you're lying in bed, before you get out of bed in the morning, when you go to bed at night, 
Um, when you're sitting, if you're driving anywhere, when you're sitting at a traffic light, that, that's a great time to practice because you're stopping and you're not stopping for very long. You could get a set of quick flicks in right there. Um, when you're, um, you're at the, the dinner table or you're feeding the baby or you're, you know, you're dealing with, you know, with that, if you're sitting down, you know, right before or after you have a meal, that's a good time to practice. If you do get any personal time where you get to sit down and, and watch a show or a movie, <laughs> which might be rare in uh, your busy life, I get that. But again, another opportunity. The challenge is you just have to think about it. Yep. Think about it. Leave a little sticky note you know, on your refrigerator or on your end table or on your computer if you're sitting at the computer all day. Um, uh, that kind of thing. But I would encourage if your goal is to see improvement, the more that you practice, the more results you will have. And I will say, I will guarantee, unless that there's a problem, and I mentioned this in the uh, first few classes, if you have pelvic pain, if you have, you know, serious incontinence that is uncontrollable, if you suspect that you have pelvic prolapse on any level, I mean, you need to check with your doctor, right? I mean, first and foremost, you need to med get medical advice. If it's a matter of just, you know what, I need to, you know, strengthen my pelvic floor. Everything we did today, if you found that you were having trouble connecting, then yeah, then practice will get you there. But I will say, I've been through not only the training, I've been through uh, programs like this personally, and it really does. It works. It, it just does. There's no magic. If you practice, I guarantee you will see improvement. So just know that. Be encouraged by that because it is great when you don't have to get up in the middle of the night to pee so often. It is great <laughs> if you're driving somewhere and you got to go and you're looking for a place that might have a bathroom, right? It's great to like, oh, okay, I got this. I have the control. I'm okay for a few more miles. So yes. anyway, a practical application. Uh, right. Okay, so next week, do any questions I want to share with you what I would like you to bring um, to class next week? Okay. Go ahead. So if you have... A, first of all, for those of us that have any type of a foam roller, which you may or may not have. If you do, okay, there you go. Great. So if you have one, bring it to class next week. Okay, we're not doing rolling. We're not. We're using it as a prop. If you don't have anything like that, then go into your kid's drawer and get a bulky pair of socks and roll up a pair of socks. Make a soft ball. Okay? So either a foam roller or soft something like this bring with you next week because we're going to take our pelvic floor training to a new level and experience and focus a little bit more on um, not only pelvic muscle tone but uh, flexibility awesome. so bring that with you and if you guys don't have any questions thank you great thank you. Thanks, as always Enjoy the sunshine. Do your homework. Everybody <laughs> stay warm. And uh, if you want to participate in our Purim gift exchange, today is the deadline to get um, a family assignment. And I will be putting these kits in the mail this afternoon. So you've got about an hour left to sign up if you want to participate. Otherwise, we'll see you guys next week. And again, these will be recorded and on our YouTube channel, which you can find on the link in the chat box. You guys have a great day. Bye.